And tonight, when President Trump announced his executive order on refugees last week, many on Capitol Hill were caught off guard. According to recent reports, there'd been little coordination between the administration and Republicans in Congress. Whether or not these growing pains for the new Trump administration are the new norm remains to be seen. So let's talk to a congressman and find out. Joining me now, Congressman from the state of Texas, Blake Farenthold. Congressman, thanks so much for being here, sir. Howdy, happy to be here. All right, Congressman, tell me what it's like, this new relationship between President Trump, his administration, and Congress. Is there much coordination that's happening? Well, I'll tell you, things are moving at a, at a very fast pace, but I think that's what the American people want. Donald Trump ran on a platform of change and uh, making change quickly. Uh, his supporters, my supporters, and I think most of the country uh, want to see things happen. Right. I mean, I think it's over 20 executive orders just in these first two weeks. And today is the two week mark uh, from his inauguration. What about the relationship, Congressman, between uh, Speaker of the House Paul Ryan and President Trump? We know that had been a little touchy on the campaign trail. They seem to be coordinating pretty well. But how are their two uh, slightly differing objectives? How is that working out in Congress? Well, the speaker uh, has told all the Republicans in Congress that he talks to President Trump uh, almost uh, every day, sometimes twice a day. So I think there's some working together. It's just, I think, uh, tough for Donald Trump, who comes from a business environment, where you can basically snap your fingers and uh, people jump uh, into Washington, uh, where the status quo uh, is very powerful and uh, folks move a, a little bit uh, more slowly. And right. I'll tell you, the speed at which Donald Trump moves moving is refreshing, though. Right. It's almost as if he's never met Congress before, if he thinks he can uh, move things along that quickly. Congressman, let me, let me ask you about Obamacare. There have been a couple of recent reports the last day or two that Republicans, uh, House Republicans specifically, are changing the narrative away from repealing Obamacare to repairing Obamacare. What can you tell me about that? Well, I think the, the, we've got a broken health care system that's costing everybody money. Whether you call it repeal or repair, it's the same thing. Get rid of the parts that don't work and that people don't like, like the individual mandate and the uh, company mandate and the government being in control of your health care, and replace it to something where you're in charge of your health care with your doctor. And that's, you know, it's just one word or the other, it's about the same thing. It's about getting rid of a broken system and putting something in that works and will save people money like Obamacare promised to do and didn't. Right. I'm, I'm going to push you on this just a little bit, just, just so uh, our viewers are clear on this, just so I'm clear on this. Is this just a rhetorical change, just a, a narrative, a way to uh, make the American people feel confident here? Or is this a difference in whether or not the actual bill Obamacare will be repealed? Because, Congressman, I'm sure your uh, constituents in Texas and pretty much everyone who voted for President Donald Trump wants Obamacare repealed. I think it's Coke and Pepsi. Uh, it, it, I think it basically means the same thing. It's just a, choosing a different word. All right. Well, I guess we'll have to wait and see because there are we are hearing those reports that uh, congressional Republicans are in a little bit of a tug of war with each other on uh, how exactly to make this happen. Congressman, you're from South Texas. You know, Donald Trump, uh, General Kelly, his secretary of Homeland Security, his new secretary, said that the wall, the border wall between Mexico and the United States will be completed within two years time now. I mean, it only took him a week to announce the construction would begin. Now he says it'll be completed in two years. Do your constituents in South Texas, do they support that wall? I think uh, the South Texas uh, idea is the border's got to be secure. How it's done isn't as important as that it is done. So whether it's secured with an actual physical wall or a virtual wall or existing manpower isn't that important. But President Trump is committed to getting the wall built. You go to Texas now, about 600 miles of it is already built. There's a lot of it built. We just got to fill in some gaps. Right. And you all from southern Texas, you're the experts on this. I mean, you're the ones that deal with much of the crime, much of the drug trafficking, much of the disadvantages of uh, people crossing the border illegally. I mean, has has President Trump consulted with you guys about how exactly to secure the border, whether it is a physical wall, whether it's a fence, whether it's increased border patrol, whether it's manpower in other ways, technology? Has he looped you guys into the process? President Trump has talked to a lot of people about how he's going to do it, but he gave the, his word to the American people that he was going to build a wall, and I suspect that uh, he's going to build a wall. Uh, I do think there are certain areas where geographically it just doesn't make sense to build a wall. If there's a cliff on one side of the uh, Rio Grande, there's a natural wall there, and I, I do think the economics of it uh, uh, 
might make it uh, better to do a virtual wall. Again, the key is securing the border. How you do it uh, is, is really not that important. And what we learned from the Israelis is vanishing time. There are areas where you could cross the border and be tracked by a UAV for hours before you disappear into the general population. But if you're in a city and you cross, all you got to do is duck into a store and you've disappeared into the general population. So uh, vanishing time, I think, is something that needs to be uh, taken into account. But if President uh, Trump wants to build the wall, I think he's going to get the support from Congress to do it. I think so. He certainly got the support from the American people to do so. Congressman, last question here, and that's about the tariffs. I mean, we heard President Trump on the campaign trail uh, talking about making Mexico pay for the wall. He's even said that he would do that now that he's been inaugurated. He said Mexico will eventually reimburse us, even if Congress fronts the money here at the beginning. One of the ways that he suggested is a tariff on uh, imported goods from Mexico. In your opinion, economically, would that harm the United States taxpayer? Now, when you start getting into uh, uh, tariffs, you start getting them going both ways. There are some problems there. But one of my sheriffs down in South Texas really had a good idea. He said, why don't we take the money that we capture with uh, drug lords as they're sending the money back to Mexico and use that forfeiture money to pay for it? That would be the Mexican drug cartels paying for the wall to uh, keep them out. I think that's a huge win. Right. That, that, that would not only be financially practical, there's some delightful poetic justice there as well. Congressman Farenthold, thank you so much for coming on the show. It was great to talk to you, sir.